This video is intended to help newer users become familiar with the Case Set Manager. The Case Set Manager is where we run an analysis. You can get to the Case Set Manager by selecting Thermal, Case Set Manager, or clicking on the green circle. It defines the exchange between Thermal Desktop and Cinda Fluent. You can take the model from geometry to temperatures with just one command. When you run a case, it will calculate radiation, calculate conduction and capacitance, build a Cinda model, run Cinda from within Thermal Desktop, which also can be dynamic using two-way communication, and finally it will post-process the results. I'm going to go straight into a sample model. This is our simple satellite tutorial that I've changed slightly. Thermal, Case Set Manager. Now this screen is the case set manager, and I'm going to come back to this later. But first I'm going to add a new case. I'm going to call it beta zero cold, and I'm going to put it in group cold. Now this has made a new group, and it's made a new case. Again, I'm going to come back to this page, but first I just want to show you how to make a case. Edit. These radiation tasks are covered under the RADCAD class. I'm going to quickly go through and create this radiation since this is covered separately. Okay, for a real case I'd probably put a little bit more work into that, but this is enough to get it done. These radiation tasks may or may not be unique for each case. These all use the orbit simply called orbit from our sample model. Now in the calculations tab, we're specifying what we want to get done. On the left, we have some options that are by default are all checked. Generate a conduction capacitance file. Build a Cinda input file. Run the Cinda model and we can also plot some information while it's running. We can post-process the Cinda results, execute mapping distress, and generate a log file. Typically these are all checked, but you may want to change some of that. For example, while you're developing a model, you might not want to execute mapping distress since it will take some time. On the right, we have what type of solution. Is it steady state? Is it transient? Is it both? Steady state before a transient? Steady state after a transient? For a transient, we can specify the start and end time. We can also run a parametric sweep of a single variable to see its effects. We can restart a run from an identical model. And finally, we have the model kicker, which works in steady state and is also covered separately. On the bottom right, we have convergence criteria. There are many, many other variables besides these, but these are the most likely you may need to change. We have the maximum number of iterations in steady state and transient, the maximum temperature change, uh, system level energy balance, and nodal level energy balance. The purpose of the output tab is self-explanatory. You can select a submodel if you want, or leave it at auto. And then we have the output increment. A value of zero means it will use one hundredth of time end as a default value. You can make it more fancy by double clicking to put in a symbol or expression. For example, during a long transient diurnal cycle, you may only need every few minutes, but during a sudden event, you may need every few seconds. So that could change during the run. I'm simply going to set it to 10 seconds. Then we have to pick what we want to output. Ideally, we can store everything. However, drive space is finite, and large models with long transients can make very large files. On the left, we have the text file output. This is typically called the .out file, and you can browse these results in a tabular format. This file can be very helpful for browsing results, but it can definitely get too unwieldy for most text editors. On the right, we have the binary file, usually a save file or perhaps a CSR. 
Our post-processing tools make use of this safe file, such as the color contours, time plotting, the tools in the model browser, and others. So if you want to see the heat flow between submodels, for example, you need to be sure to include temperature and conductors at a minimum. The Cinta tab is where we really find the power to add user logic. The first thing we can do is select which submodels to build. By default, all submodels are built, but there may be situations where some should be excluded. For example, you might have a convection submodel that is not built when a spacecraft is out of the atmosphere. From options, we can define user file names. In controls, you have access to all control variables for thermal and fluid submodels. We have a brief description of these variables, but for more information, just search the Cinda Fluent Manual for more information. The operations block is what is actually run. It is updated based on entries in the calculations tab, but you can edit it directly here if you need more control. Then we have direct access to all those submodel logic blocks in the Cinda file. If we click on any of the submodels, it brings up a menu of all the data blocks. Then we can add logic to any of them. For example, I can edit this main submodel and select variables too. This will run at the end of each time step. Then I can simply write if the temperature of node 1 is greater than 200, then time end is equal to time n. Now time n is the current time, so this would end the analysis by setting the end time to whatever the current time is. When I do that, there's an asterisk on variables 2. And when I click OK, you can see var2, variables2, shows up. If I ever want to see what submodels have been altered, I can just look here. The Dynamic tab is a whole other class. The very short version is that Dynamic Cinda allows Cinda to ask Thermal Desktop for new conduction and capacitance and radiation files. This can make use of the solver and reliability modules. This is a very powerful tool and it gets several classes just for this. The advanced tab is primarily about setting initial temperature and lump states. This is different from a restart in that the models don't even need to be identical. The case can be initialized to any time in the save file or CSR. You can also define a run directory and set any custom compiler additions. The Properties tab allows you to use a different optical or thermophysical property database, and also to define aliases. When changing property files, all the property names must be identical. For example, you couldn't have aluminum 6061 in your model and then use an override database with AL6061. Given the uncertainties with optical properties, in addition to the changes between beginning of life and end of life, it is very common to have different optical property databases for hot and cold. Aliases allow you to define something like isolator and then assign it to ceramic for one case and titanium for another, for example. For this case, I want to override the existing optical properties with beginning of life properties. The Symbols tab allows you to override a symbol for a given case. For example, you might want to change the heat load on a component, disable a heater, beta angle, or even change the size of a radiator. For this case, I want to change chip power to 12. So I'll just double click, 12, OK. Then it shows up over here on this list, chip power, what the override value is, and what the global value is. The last tab is just for comments. What seems obvious at the time might be very confusing later on. 
so we always suggest you leave a comment indicating what this case was for. Now I have made my beta zero cold case and I'm back at this main case set manager page. What I want to show you next is copy. With this selected, copy. And I'm going to call this beta 30 cold. This is a great way to set up cases faster when they have things in common. Now these cases will have different radiation, but let's say all I wanted to do was change a power dissipation. In that case, I could uncheck this box for maintain unique radiation file names, and they would share radiation files, which can save you a lot of time. Now I'm going to edit this new case by double clicking and going to the symbols page. Now I want to take a beta angle, double click and change it to 30. And that's how easy it is to make a new case. Now, of course, that assumes that the symbol beta angle is controlling my orbit, and in fact it is. Now, you could have dozens of cases, and we created these groups for organizing them. The grouping is up to you, of course. You may want to split them by hot and cold, by beta angle, or something entirely of your own choosing. You can also drag and drop between them. Just like objects in the thermal model, you can edit multiple cases at once. Select several of them using control, or just select the whole group. Here I can select all the hot cases, edit them, and use an override for end-of-life optical properties. Selecting two cases allows you the opportunity to compare them. This will list all the things that are different between them. If you want to share these case definitions between drawing files, you can certainly import and export them. Save drawing before running is self-explanatory, and usually I leave that checked in case something causes a crash. Then there is run with lower system priority. A big model can eat up a lot of computer resources, so it can be difficult to do other tasks while it runs. With this checked, the solution may take a little longer, but it will be easier to open email, work on a report, or other such things. Then there's the option for running in batch mode. Batch mode means that for multiple cases, the radiation tasks and conduction and capacitance will be done for all cases, and then it will launch Cinda for all cases. It's also possible to skip running Cinda and instead run those cases later without AutoCAD. Finally, we have what to do if duplicate nodes are found. There is one slightly hidden trick here. If I right click on a case, I have the existing menu options I already had, but I also have set symbols, aliases, override databases to global. Let's say there are symbols that will change an orbit definition, such as I have beta angle, or could even be disabling a tracker. That can be difficult to verify since the override is only active when the case is running. This option will change the global values to match this case. Then I could easily make sure the orbit is doing what I want. When I'm done with that, there's the option to put these global values back. Reset symbols back to global values. That's it. I hope you now understand all the ins and outs of the case set manager.